Good morning, my name's Tom, and uh, today's video is on normalization. Yesterday I did a video on denial, projection, and rationalization. Um, and during that video, you can see that there's a very, very close link in how, proje how uh, projection and rationalization work with, norm with uh, denial. Now we're going to see how normalization works with denial. Uh, when you have an addiction problem, even if you're not uh, aware of a direct link between your behavior and your addiction, it exists. You need, I've said it many times before, to be an alcoholic or to be a drug addict is to be codependent. You need people to enable your behavior and so you will enable their behavior. There's no such thing as a person with an addiction problem who is not codependent. So we'll start with normalization, you know, I'm only having, you know, in the workplace somebody might be saying, well I only had two drinks at lunch, I only had two pints, that's nothing, I can hold my alcohol. But that is something, you can't make it through the workday sober. You know, and in, you know, certain jobs where people are, do that, you, you know, other people's safety might be impacted by your impaired state, even if you don't believe you're impaired. But you've normalized it and you insist it's fine. Um, you know, and some people, when it gets really bad, and they say, well, you know, I work better, you know, uh, after, after I take a hit, you know, like uh, they, ha they smoke weed on the job, or they wake and bake, as we called it when I was in high school. Um, Sometimes that's actually true because, you know, their hands start to shake a little bit when uh, they don't have their uh, fix, whether it's alcohol or something else. And now suddenly their dexterity is shot and they can't focus because they're withdrawing that fast. That's how hooked they are. And so they normalize it by like, look, I, I do my best work, I'm more relaxed, I can focus better. And it's like, that's true because when you're not actively using, you're withdrawing. And to deal with that, you actually need to be out of work for a couple weeks. Uh, that or you have to uh, be out for a few days and then you need, uh, you know, to medicines from the clinic to help keep you steady as you finish your withdrawal with lessened symptoms. Uh, another example of normalization. Everybody's doing it. You know, like, everybody jumps on this bandwagon. It doesn't have to be true. And you know it isn't true. But, uh, you know, you say everybody's doing it because you need that to be true. If it's not true then that means there's something wrong with you. You know, it, it's a throwback to uh, what your parents might have said to you when you were a kid. Well, if everybody jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge, would you do it too? Uh, you know, as silly as that and annoying as that, uh, you know, refrain might be coming from your parents, it does have applications later in life uh, for adults. So it's important to remember that, uh, no, not everybody's doing it. And no, you don't actually work better because you got high or you, because you had a drink. And if you actually are working better, then you have a serious problem. And you need to actually take the time to focus on this because it gets worse, so much worse. And you'll maybe functional until you retire. But once you hit that retirement age and you don't have any work obligations, that's when you start to go downhill really, really fast. And that's just really sad. It's sad for the family to watch, it's sad for the friends to watch, all your former coworkers, they'll just shrug and walk away because they don't need that kind of negativity in their life. So it's important to recognize normalization for what it is and then break out of that cycle.